Hi friends, welcome back to Allan Law. This is a quick O B G Y N. And today I'm going to talk about briefly about prolapsed umbilical cord. Okay, so in examination, especially in USMLE or any other medical board examinations, they give the history of a multigravida woman complaining coming to the labor room where she is uh, having what you call 34 or 35 weeks of gestation with the regular contractions. Okay, and uh, the there's a breach breach presentation. Okay, uh, certainly on examination when you start examining. Um, the her bag of water suddenly ruptures, okay, and the loop of umbilical cord protrudes through the cervix between the fetal extremities. So this is a kind of uh, what you call case scenario they can give you, okay. So that's nothing but umbilical cord prolapse. So remember, umbilical cord prolapse is an obstetric emergency. Why? Because if the cord gets compressed between the fetal head, okay, because gets compressed the fetal oxygenation will be jeopardized okay and that can be a very dangerous to what you call a fetus okay fetal death can take place so umbilical cord prolapse should be treated very soon so we have a prolapse three types one is a occult then we have partial then we have complete okay prolapse can be occult okay what's occult is nothing but the cord the umbilical cord right has not come through the cervix but is being compressed between the fetal head and the uterine wall it has not come out if this is the uterus cervix and this is a fetal head, for example, I'm telling, I'm not able to draw it completely. Okay, this is a fetus and this is a foot. Okay, uh, if the umbilical cord is being compressed over here, okay, this is, this is what I'm talking about, between the, what you call, uterine wall and the fetal head, this is known as occult, okay. And, but remember the fetal, the, the umbilical cord has not come out of the cervix. Okay, the partial is nothing but is a cord is between the head and the dilated cervical os but has not protruded into the vagina. So similar case will be there but it has come down to what you call uh, a dilated cervical os, cervical os, okay, but not protruded into the vagina. So complete is nothing but the cord has protruded into the vagina means there is a compression inside and it has protruded outside okay so let's talk about this and what are the risk factors who will develop this uh, what you call a prolapsed umbilical cord is uh, if there is a what you call a rupture of membranes with presenting fetal part not applied firmly to the cervix okay that's the most common uh, what you call uh, cause for this uh, prolapsed umbilical cord Okay, rupture of the membranes with presenting fetal part not applied firmly to the cervix. And the other cause can be a malpresentation. Okay, malpresentation. How do you manage this? This is very important. Okay, so before that, I would like to tell you the few important points about the prolapse umbilical cord you should remember is in, a, in USMLA, they will give the pregnant lady with regular uterine contractions remember about this regular internet contraction is really very important okay and amniotomy at minus two station okay and severe variable deceleration severe variable deceleration okay and how do you manage this management do not hold the cord or try to push it back into the uterus remember if you if you hold it and try to push it you can break it one possibility or second possibility you're gonna compress it more okay so do not try to hold the cord or try to push it right okay guys 
So place the patient in a knee chest position. Elevate the presenting part. Avoid palpating the cord. Perform immediate caesarean delivery. So what's the treatment? It's caesarean delivery. Immediate caesarean delivery known as obstetric emergency caesarean delivery. Okay. So this is these are really very important. Okay guys. So you have to remember about this and uh, Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you got an idea. This is a quick OBGYN lecture. Thank you so much.